Arz Bardan Mishra, stage is all yours. Thank you. So hello everyone, my name is Harsh. I am joining from India and I'm currently working as an engineer at LocalStack. So the topic of this presentation would be how you can develop your Python cloud and serverless applications pretty much on your local machine without having to connect to a real cloud account with LocalStack. So before we get started, I would like to do a quick mini survey just to know about a bit of my audience over here. So how many of you have experience working with any public cloud like AWS, Azure, GCP? I guess most of us here have some experience. So have you heard of or basically worked with LocalStack before? A quick show of hands. Wow, I knew that we have a huge community for LocalStack in Japan. I didn't know like a lot of them are over here as well. So if you're using cloud, what are you basically using to run your workloads? Are you using virtual machines, like serverless functions, Kubernetes, anything else? Anyone? Okay. Awesome then. So I guess I have a pretty good understanding about what we have here, so let's get started. So we have a very simple agenda. Uh, we would be talking about what it is like to basically do your Python cloud development and testing on AWS right now. Then we are going to jump into how you can get started with LocalStack. I'm gonna do a very quick demonstration. Uh, thirdly, I will try to deploy a fully fledged AWS serverless application pretty much on my local machine with LocalStack. Then I'm gonna talk about something that's pretty niche. It's something like Git for your cloud infrastructure, basically cloud pods. And I will be wrapping up with some internal Python gems because after all we are in PyCon, so we definitely wanna know about how LocalStack is innovating on this particular respect. So with that said, let's talk a bit about Python cloud development and testing right now. So in the current scenario, if you are trying to build and deploy an application on cloud, I'm specifically talking about AWS here, there are three mechanisms. Either you can go with something like infrastructure as a service, so you have an application, you just deploy this to an EC2 or a bare metal server, you can use something like Terraform for this purpose, and you would be good. This is how most of us basically do our cloud development. Then we have the container as a service, so this is where you try to leverage something like Kubernetes or Docker, and there are a bunch of services in AWS, in Azure, and GCP that lets you do that. And finally, we have the new kid in the town, serverless development, I guess it's pretty controversial, but it basically allows you to build your applications with a bunch of different integrations, and we have got Lambdas, DynamoDB, SQSQs, SNS topics, and more of that, and with this comes the promise that your application can scale pretty good, at a minimal cost, which again is pretty uh, controversial because there are so many talking points about it. But let's talk about the serverless application development. So what is the current scenario like? So I have taken the user persona of Alice over here. So Alice has been tasked with creating like a new serverless web application right on the AWS cloud. Now, totally depending upon her local machines, she now realizes that there are a lot of dependencies that she has no control over, like databases, message queues, S3 buckets, and all of these things. So what she does is like, she tries to resolve these dependencies, she sets up these real resources right on the cloud for testing, but now, when she hits the deploy button, this is when things start getting interesting, because now you're waiting for seconds and minutes and maybe even hours to just deploy a sample copy of your application. And this is one of the most legitimate excuses, like, if you want to get back to work, you can just say like, hey, I'm deploying my application to the cloud. So the whole dev and test loop on the public cloud, specifically AWS, Azure, and GCP, is very, very slow, and it's very, very tedious. As a developer, I want to just hit maybe a single button or maybe run a few commands and just get to see like what exactly is happening in my application. I don't want to wait upon a lot of dependencies that I have simply no control over. So once she happens to de deploy her application, now things start getting interesting. She suddenly gets a red build on one of her branches, and now she's like, okay, why can't I attach a debugger to my ID? Like, how can I enable the debug logging? How can I get some more logs? And what exactly this particular error is? Like, how can I fix this out? So the problems that there are in the public cloud is pretty, like, standard. Everyone is facing them. Everyone is, like, kind of pretty much battling with obscure issues, and we need a way to fix this out. So if you want to test your cloud application deployments, there are like various strategies right now. The very first one is something that we call as mocking. I guess most of you might have heard about a library called as Moto. So Moto is a pretty famous uh, library, and this is what LocalStack exactly builds upon. 
It's a library that allows you to mock your AWS infrastructure on your local machine. So you can pretty much use it to like write your unit tests and all of these things that helps you like get started with the entire stuff. Then we have got service emulation. Uh, we have a slide on that itself. Uh, so service emulation basically means that we emulate some basic parts of the public cloud. So for example, a lot of people might have heard about Minio. So a lot of people say like, okay, if you wanna use S3 on my local machine, I can just swap that with a Minio Docker image and that pretty much works fine. But what we want is a full blown cloud emulation. Just imagine like having a lot of your services integrated to each other running pretty much on your local machine. That's, that's what an ideal world might look like. And finally, there is a staging environment, like push your application to the staging, everything runs over there, you're happy, the developers are happy, the managers are happy, everyone is happy. So with mocking, this is how something looks like. So over here, we, just, we are just using uh, Moto, basically, and we are creating like an S3 bucket, running some application logic using AWS, and asserting if something is working fine or not. But again, you exactly cannot replicate what's happening inside that S3 bucket you created because that's just mocked. What if you wanna see like what files are present in that S3 bucket? You simply have no way of doing that. For service emulation, we have like a lot of things. AWS provides DynamoDB local, Step Functions local, SAM local. Azure has its own service emulators. But again, there are various limitations for that. There is an API compatibility issue. They still cannot test your infrastructure as code, like CDK or Terraform or anything else. And eventually, these are very stripped down versions, so you cannot really expect that they are working in a similar way as the real cloud services. So this is where we enter into the realm of like core cloud emulation, and this is where we get to know about what LocalStack is. So on the surface, LocalStack is a cloud development framework that we use for application development, testing, and more of that. But under the hood, what we are exactly is an AWS emulator. So we are a core cloud emulator, we are on GitHub. And I guess we have, like the number is slightly uh, outdated right now, we have almost 49.7K GitHub stars. So we are one of the most popular projects on GitHub. Uh, it has been like in development since the past six years, initially at Atlassian, and now we have a separate company that's working on that. And what LocalStack basically does is like it acts as a drop-in replacement for AWS that runs on your local machine. So, so you swap your AWS dependencies with LocalStack and your application can expect to work in a similar fashion right on your local machine without having to use a real cloud at all. So how LocalStack does this is pretty interesting. Uh, we basically enable a highly efficient dev and test loop. So if you are like, let's say, creating an EKS cluster on AWS, so I ran this benchmark just yesterday, I did not add it to my slides, but if you run an EKS cluster on LocalStack, let's say using Pulumi, that's gonna take you like about 10 to 15 minutes. And if you're doing this on LocalStack, that's gonna take you around a minute and 30 seconds. So you definitely see that there is like a difference in the whole agility that LocalStack is enabling for you. And the best part is that it is shipped as a Docker image. So all that you need to have is a Docker image. Maybe you can add a CLI that I will be showcasing so that you can run the things on the test. And we support over 90 plus AWS APIs. So it includes like compute, databases, messaging, more exotic APIs that you might wanna test and integrate. And we have some like collaboration features that I will be talking about at the end itself. So if you wanna take a look at the local stack architecture, it's, it's really very simple. Uh, so over the hood, we have local stack. Then we have the service emulators entirely written in Python. And some of these uh, code that we have written almost run over like 10 to 20,000 lines of code if you wanna take a look at our GitHub repository. Then we have the AWS protocol and that basically allows us to integrate with all of the AWS integrations. So CDK, SAM, AWS CLI, whatever you wanna use with, you can just swap in just one parameter. You can just say to AWS that, hey, I wanna point my endpoint URL to where LocalStack is running, and you can just start your whole development and testing. So over the 10,000 feet, uh, LocalStack isn't exactly replacing AWS. Like AWS has massive data centers. Uh, it follows a multi-tenant architecture. It has like failovers and everything out there. So we don't want people to use LocalStack on the production. LocalStack is more meant for local development and testing alone. Uh, so if you wanna take a look at 10,000 feet view, where local stack is really coming in handy is your developer machine, so laptops, personal computers, or over the continuous integration pipelines, so Circle CI, GitHub Actions, Travis CI, and more of these. Once you're good to see, once you think like, okay, my application is working good, this is where you can deploy your application to the live AWS cloud, where your application can basically scale to millions of users across the world. So if you wanna set up local stack on your machine, uh, all that you need to do is like three steps. The first one is like, you pull the local stack image, 
It has been pulled over 180 million times, I guess. I'm not sure. Uh, second, you can install the AWS local CLI. Uh, again, like you don't need this step if you already have like an AWS CLI itself. And the third one is like you can install the CLI. But if you really want to go pretty slim, you can just install the Docker image. You can just pull it out, and you're good to go. Once you have installed local stack on your local machine, all that you need to do is like local stack start. But if you have not installed the CLI, just say like Docker and local stack slash local stack, and you're good to go. So to validate what I have said till now, to basically make sure that everyone is on the same page, that whatever I have said is true, because for a lot of people, a full-blown AWS cloud emulation is pretty, like kind of heaven, kind of a dream. So I have a very simple, yeah. Yes, so here I am. I hope my terminal is visible. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is like, I'm gonna start my local stack container. So the CLI basically acts as a control plane uh, for my local stack Docker container. It will really take like around a few seconds to start up. And over here you can see like your local stack container has basically started up. So one of the interesting things that you will notice is that local stack is running on this port 4566. So that's the edge port of local stack. It basically means that whatever services you have, you can just point it to this particular port and it will entirely work fine. So I can see that I have this one script that's very, very handy. So over here, what I'm doing is like, I'm using the standard AWS CLI, and I'm just creating like an S3 bucket called as test. I'm just adding a hello world file. And then I just copy over this file from my local directory to the S3 bucket that local stack has created. And then we can just query the bucket, we can get to see what's really inside the S3 bucket. So I can just click enter, and I hope I should be good. So yes, my bucket has been created, my file has been uploaded to this, and my file is also visible uh, right on the S3 bucket. I can also, instead of using this endpoint URL parameter over and over again, I can just use this one script that's called the AWS local. So this is like just a wrapper script over AWS that says to it like, hey, please do not send your API request to the live AWS cloud, please send it to the edge board that local stack is running, and that will just do the trick. So I can just copy paste this once again. And over here, it will just run out. And yeah, here we are. One of the interesting things that you will see on the logs is that local stack is logging every AWS API request that you're sending along with the status code. So that means that this enables a lot of debugging capabilities. You can get to see which APIs are failing and how you can basically fix them out. So it adds like a lot of advantages to you. Um, the best part, yeah. The best part about local stack is like it's a highly configurable platform. So we have like a lot of these configurations that simply allows you to alter the behavior of local stack. I'm gonna exactly showcase that like maybe after five minutes. Uh, but you can enable like a lot of settings over here. Maybe if you wanna enable features like Lambda hot reloading or if you wanna enable IAM enforcement, a lot of people are into security these days. This is something that local stack can basically help you with. So with that said, I don't want to do a very simple hello world example. I want to showcase something that's more complex. And that's the reason we have this one section on completely deploying a serverless app to local stack. So I have a pretty simple serverless image resizer, completely built using Python. And again, like this might look like a very niche cloud native architecture. Uh, it's really very simple. All that we have is like three Lambda functions or serverless functions as you can call. Uh, what we are basically doing is like we will be uploading our images to a web client, and it will basically resize that image and send it to us, and everything is being done in a serverless manner. So we have like three Lambda functions, we have an S3 bucket, we are gonna be like using an S3 website, so without much ado, I guess we can just jump into the code. Um, yeah. I'm not sure how to go back, yeah. Yes, so maybe I can just close this out. Yeah, so over here I have this one script that I can just run, but as it is running, I can just showcase what's really inside that particular script. Yeah, so what we're doing here is like creating a bunch of S3 buckets just using the AWS local CLI. We have like SSM parameters, SNS topics, a bunch of Lambda functions, like everything that you will expect if you're running like a serverless app on, uh, on AWS and local stack itself. I'm not sure if my machine froze, but yeah, oh, here we are. So again, like it creates the Lambda functions, and finally what it will do is like, it will package the Lambda so that we can just use the pillow library that has like some additional dependencies. 
And lastly, we will use the S3 API to basically create an S3 bucket where we can upload our website. So once that is done, we actually have this whole web URL. So I can click on here. Okay, maybe I should, I did not compensate for this, but yeah, maybe I should just copy this, show it right here. These are the perils of having two monitors. Not sure, yeah. Can you help me out? I guess I'm not able to see this. My keyboard is not working, sort of. Yeah, here we are. Uh, so thanks for your patience. I can just click on this load from API that just loads a bunch of Lambda function URLs. I can just click on like applying these function URLs. So function URLs are basically a means to expose your Lambda functions as an HTTP REST API. And then I can just choose a file. So in this case, yeah, so in this case I have the PyCon file, like the PyCon APAC. And I can just click on upload. Okay, so one of the things that I noticed is that it has blocked the course origins. So basically my web client is not able to connect to my local stack container. I guess everyone has suffered from this problem at one or the other point of time. But let me just quickly stop my local stack container and just start it all over again. Yeah. So we have this whole, uh, maybe I should just expand this once again. So we have this whole uh, configuration variable called as the extra course allowed origin. So basically I'm saying like any web client can basically connect to my local stack container and I can again say like local stack start. Yeah, this will restart my local stack container and just spawn up all of these services once all again. And once this is done, I guess I can just hit that deploy script all over again. So it will start the deployment and it's gonna be like really fast once again. So let's hope so. So it's collecting pillow right now. It will install the dependencies once again. Yeah, here we are. So if I just go back all over again and if I just refresh this whole thing, it is again saying like some errors, but I can just load it from API once again. I can apply the configuration and then I can choose the file that I wanna upload and I just click hit on the upload. So the whole dev and test loop is like pretty fast over here as it's pretty evident. So it's success. And now I can just go down, I can click on the refresh button and I can see that my files are available right now. So previously the size of the image was almost 61,000 bytes and now it's almost 14,000 bytes. So we have like this entire serverless application that's pretty much running on local stack right now and I guess that's pretty great. Uh, if I just switch back to my slides once again, I guess I, yeah. So you had a look at the whole application. So what if I just wanna like make changes to my Lambda function and I just wanna see like the whole thing reflected all over again. So this is where we have this concept of like hot reloading the Lambda functions. So just like how you have hot reloading for your web applications, you just hit save and your entire web application is loaded. In contrast, if you wanna do the same thing with Lambdas, you have to like again package it as a zip that you already sh like that you already like, uh, that you have already seen like right now. And if you're just using containers, you have to again rebuild the whole container and just do the whole thing. In this case, all that you need to do is like set up a special S3 bucket called as the hot reload. 
and you can set up like an absolute path to the Lambda code. So what local stack will basically do is like it will mount the particular Lambda function into the local stack container and everything that you are saving on your local file system, it's gonna be reflected on the real Lambda function in a matter of a few milliseconds. So this enables like a complete hot reloading experience for you and I guess this just makes the whole experience like so seamless to build and test out your Lambda functions. So due to the time constraints, I guess I'll maybe skip the demo and just move to the next part. And yeah, enforcing the IAM policies. So a lot of the people have been working with identity and access management and whenever they see about local stack, they ask like, can we emulate IAM policies because they really wanna test it out. The good part is that you can actually do that and we have a special feature called as the Enforce IAM. Now if I, if I switch back uh, to my terminal, you can especially see that I have not explicitly specified any proper IAM role over here. So all you can see is like AR and AWS IAM. I'm using this 12 digit uh, account ID that's pretty much like mocked on local stack, but there is no actual IAM role that I have created. If you wanna do the same setup on, let's say the live AWS, this whole system will exactly fail out because we are not creating these IAM policies, we are not creating, creating these IAM roles, but let's say you wanna test this out uh, over on local stack itself. So in this case, all that you need to do is like set up a config variable called as enforce underscore IAM and just to start your local stack container with that, and whatever IAM policies like that is in conflict or that is not specified, local stack will explicitly fail that out in a, fashion, in a fashion that is very, very similar to the live AWS cloud. If you wanna just check out like what's exactly going wrong and not exactly fail your deployment, you can just enable this whole IAM underscore soft underscore mode, and that is basically going to print out that, hey, this particular resource that you're trying to access is not exactly like, you don't have access to that or it is explicitly denied for you, so please fix that out before you actually try to access the same. There are also like live policy streams, so you can just say like local stack AWS IAM summary, and that's gonna like start printing out all of the IAM policies for you. So you don't even need to be an IAM expert if you're working with local stack. You can just create an application, run the application, and that will automatically start printing your policies out for you. We also have something that's called as the cloud pods. So cloud pods is our infrastructure state management tool, and as I said before, like it's kind of the git for cloud infrastructure. Like what if you wanna save your cloud infra, restore it at a particular point of time and just test it out? Cloud pods is exa exactly for that. One thing that you might have noticed is that the state in local stack is not ephemeral. So of course like you wanna save your state, you wanna restore it at some point of time and cloud pods exactly help you to do that. And cloud pods has like immense advantages. Like you can just persist all of your cloud, local cloud infra, you can share it with your team members so that everyone is on the same page. You can create your reproducible applications and you can also like use it to like seed your CI environments. And finally, you can like reproduce failures with a consistent parity against uh, AWS as well. So this is like pretty great and like I don't wanna do like a fully fledged demo, but maybe if I just show how I can save a cloud pod, I can just go over here and I can just say like local stack pod save and save it as a cloud pod. And over here you can see the cloud pods APIs are getting fired up. So this is gonna like take a few seconds here and there. But over here my cloud pod has been successfully exported. So I can share this cloud pod with any one of you in this room and all of you can basically run this application on your local machine without having to run the same steps over and over again. So with that said, I guess uh, I have just like few more minutes left, so maybe I can talk a bit about some of the internal Python gems, like how local stack is basically enabling this whole Python, sorry, this whole AWS cloud emulation. So how do we do it? Of course, we are using Python. So we started back in 2017 at Atlassian, and over there, Python was kind of the de facto way of like stitching out multiple different tools, services, libraries together. And ever since then, like people have suggested to like, even last week someone suggested to like rewrite whole local stack in Rust, but in the end of the our heart, like we know like Python is the best choice for us. The second part is like we always try to reduce complexity and this is something that we have innovated over the time. I'm gonna show this in the next slide. We of course leverage upon the open source AWS ecosystem. So every time I'm running these Lambda functions, we are using the official AWS base images that is being provided to basically make sure that everything is really consistent. And we have really standardized all of the repeatable parts, so development, testing, maintenance, and of course like we have embraced the pluggability. So to basically generate like these services, we use something that's called as the Smithy. So Smithy is an SDK specification language that AWS internally created. So 
all of these specifications are actually available open source. So I'm not sure like if I have closed this down, but if you actually go to this repository link over here, you can get to see that all of the specifications for SQS are available right here. So we saw an opportunity. What if we can scrape all of these like specifications and actually generate API stubs out of that? So this is exactly what LocalStack uses. So LocalStack built out something that's called as the ASF. It's like Amazon server framework with no affiliation to Amazon. And basically it's like a, the whole AWS is a remote procedure call. So they have like ton of these specifications. So what we do is like we scrape the specifications, we load it into local stack and it generates all of the API stuffs for us. And we have this really simple script. We just say like generate the service type, generate the service API. And once we are done, we just format the whole code, remove the unused imports, format with black, sort the imports, and we are done. And basically this allows us to like generate API steps for all of the AWS services that is pretty much public right now. So we in fact have like a regular running GitHub action workflow that runs almost every Monday and that automatically generate, like automatically updates all of the AWS APIs for you. So if you say like, okay, this API is available in AWS, when will it be available in local stack? I guess this is the answer to that. Everything is being updated automatically. And this basically gives you confidence that local stack is on a similar parity with AWS right now. Uh, we have also tried to improve the whole uh, like plugin mechanism. So previously, we had like a single registry where we used to have like a lot of these imports. There, there is a lot of code over here. And to be honest, like this used to take like almost five plus seconds to load it in the entirety. And if you're trying to use a service like Kinesis or S3, that's gonna take like a few more seconds. And there was a problem of like not able to discover some unknown packages and some other problems out here. So what we built is like something that's called as Plux. So Plux is like a Python code loading framework, and I guess I can give a completely different talk onto that. But what it enables for us is like we can make the local stack an extensible platform. So we have the local stack code that's pretty much open source. We have local stack ext, that's like the closed source version of local stack that we use it for our customers. We have the extensions. So with Plux, we can build out these extensions. Uh, what Plux basically helps us with is like it provides the tools so that we can load the plugins right at the runtime, and we can also discover these plugins like at the build time itself. So we don't have to like manually specify all of these plugins in our setup.py file. So this is how Plux works. And with Plux, you can basically expose your classes, your functions, even as plugins itself. And finally, we have something like parity testing. So with parity testing, what we do is like, we write our tests, we generate, like we upload that to the cloud, and it generates this huge JSON spec for us called as snapshot.json which basically states like how this particular code is supposed to work on the cloud. And then we run these same kind of tests against local stack itself. So I'm this sorry. is like, hmm? uh, time is up, please yep. end the presentation. Yeah, so this is pretty much like about snapshot testing. Maybe I can just share a link after this talk. And with that said, I guess, thanks to all of the contributors who have kind of helped us make this project out. And thanks to PyCon Japan for inviting me over here for this talk, really appreciate it. And with that said, you can connect with me like over any of the social media links or you can just scan this QR code and get involved with the community we have right here. Thank so, you for thank your you. presentation. Yeah. If anyone has any questions, please raise your, raise your hand. Yeah. That was absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much. One question about managing your infrastructure with us code, right? So Terraform. You have demoed using AWS CLI to mm -hmm. interact with uh, local stack and just swapping the endpoint, right? Yep. Can we do the same with Terraform? Can I run Terraform config using, specifically my question is, can I just use the AWS provider yes, just exactly. swapping the endpoint and just basically test my Terraform or maybe spin up mm -hmm. local stack, would you call those pods, right, using yep. Terraform? What differences would there be between the Terraform config that I would run against AWS versus what I can just do in, on Docker on my laptop? Okay, so, you, so uh, you wanna run a Terraform configuration on AWS and you yes. wanna run this so on the I do stack. have a Terraform configuration mm -hmm. that we run, just execute, obviously we plan and then we apply to AWS. Could, basic question is, could I do the same with local stack or what are the limitations of that yeah. approach? So in case of Terraform, they have this interesting like provider override mechanism. So you can create like a provider.tf file in your project directory, and you can just specify the service endpoints for all of the different services. So that enables like the whole thing for you. Uh, if you don't want to use a provider.tf, we have this whole Terraform local script. 
again, written using Python. And you can just swap your Terraform CLI with TF local or your open tofu CLI with TF local or whatever. And you can just run your Terraform tests against local stack itself. So local stack integrates with any of the like library framework or service provider that kind of exposes the endpoint URL. So if it has the endpoint URL, local stack will support that. So, yeah. Yeah, thanks for the question. That was one I, I would like to Another question is like, like to like usually we run a like local compose in the like local machine. And uh, how does it compare to this local state about the uh, performance? So I have you have some like uh, insight or some suggestion? Uh, I'm really sorry, but I was not able to get the question. Can you please I mean, a it's more about comparing the local Docker Compose, right? mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, about the performance. How does it compare? OK, so Docker Compose versus local stack. Something like, yes. Yeah, so uh, local stack is a Docker container. So Docker Compose is something that local stack integrates with. So just drop in local stack in your Docker Compose configuration. Just run it as part of that, and it's going to run. So like local stack also supports some external components like RDS databases and all of these things. So if you want to use something that's your, of your own choice, you can just add it in your Docker Compose config, and that will just work out of the box. Uh, OK, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Any more questions? Yeah. Thank you for a good presentation. So I have a question. Uh, do you have experience to um, uh, deal with um, compatibility between a local stack and real uh, cloud application or cloud service? No, I'm sorry, but I'm not able to get your question. Uh, so I think. <laughs> yeah. Do you have experience to deal with um, compatibility, compatibility mm -hmm. problem between a local stack and AWS? Uh, like AWS or yeah. yeah, I guess that's pretty interesting. I guess uh, I can just show this really quick in a minute or so. But we have this local stack coverage page. So I was just showing that whole last slide about parity testing. This is what parity testing enables for us. So if I go to like a service like, let's say, Lambda. Lambda is our best supported service with over 95% like integration with the live AWS. You can actually see like what operations has been implemented where is it available? And you can also see the tests that we use to implement this. So you can actually go to, go to one of these tests. Mm, not sure how I'm not able to click this. Okay, my system has hanged. But yeah, uh, you, get, you get the gist. So like you can see the tests, you can get to know like how compatible local stack is. And you can also get to see like, is it validated by the internal test suite? Is it validated by Terraform? Is it AWS validated? And like a lot of these options. Okay, it has loaded now. So you can actually go and click on one of these tests, and that will redirect you to a file where you can find all of these tests right over there. So this is exactly what uh, you can use to get started with this parity testing. Yeah. The time is up. We'll have to end here. Thank you very much for your talk. Everybody, please give a huge round of applause to our speaker.